Good morning. I'm Cody Robert Judy. And this is a cry in the wilderness. Prepare ye, prepare ye for the coming of the Lord. <laughs> I've been just hot today. Sometimes I have to tell you uh, that it's frustrating for me to see the stupidity of peeping and muttering spirits of people out there. Telling people to repent, but not telling them what to repent of. Telling them they're on the wrong path, but not showing them the path they ought to be on. Not showing them the error of their ways, just saying they're wrong. It, I mean, it's like beyond stupid. I mean, if the Lord's going to correct you, wouldn't you want him to show you what path you ought to be on? What are we doing wrong? How are our judgments wrong? Most Christians just sit there and say, repent, repent. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord. Really? And that's all. Repent, repent. Okay. So they're talking to the unbelievers who never heard of Jesus Christ. If I was to title this video, I want to title it. I don't know. The Lord has got me on Sarah, Abraham's wife because she was such a fantastic woman. There's a picture I made. Her, Hagar, and Abraham. That picture references Genesis 12, 10 through 20, and 21 through 18. As he was about to enter Egypt, he said to his wife, Sarai, I know what a beautiful woman you are. When the Egyptians see you, they will say, this is his wife. Then they will kill me, but will let you live. Say you are my sister, so that I will be treated well for your sake, and my life will be spared because of you. And then the other one is Genesis 16:12. And Sarah said to Abram, Behold now, the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid, yet it may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarah. And my comments on the picture below say, Sarai, later Sarah, was a most beautiful woman inside and out. She protected her husband with everything she had. She understood the value of their relationship was much greater than sex, having herself been taken to save her husband's life. She also understood in her 60s the value of family under her husband in eternity, working to expand him and thusly her own inheritance. Abraham was a very handsome man. 
We should expect he was from all the characteristics God chose to bring through him in promises. Then I said, this depiction I've made much more reflects the reality in vision the Lord has shown me than anything I've seen depicted by others. 928 18, Cody Robert Judy. It's 2018. I wrote uh, 21 on there. You know, sometimes I make these pictures in the in the dark. Uh, you know, Lord gets me up and you know. So if there's misspellings on there or whatever, you know, don't get caught up of. picking the uh, beams the slivers out of my eye well you can do what you want I don't care you get my saying you get my meaning anyway I was reflecting on a friend who um, she she's a beautiful woman and and she um, uh, I won't mention her name, but she, uh, she was uh, decrying the, um, all the circus and the arena that's surrounding Kavanaugh hearings. And the woman that came forth, um, Dr. Ford, to testify against uh, Brett Kavanaugh in Congress <laughs> saying that they'd had a, a sexual encounter and um, you all can go to the news media to see what she says if you want to say it and I, I, I that's, it, 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 it's literally so disgusting you know and she would bring this up when he comes in front to be made a U.S. Supreme Court Justice. I mean, she didn't say anything about it when he was made a judge, an appellate court judge in D.C., you know. And then she, she jumps in the spotlight and, and she gets it. Just because the Democrats want to hold up the nomination or sabotage it, one of the two. I'll tell you what needs to happen because justices of the U.S. Supreme Court, they are appointed for life, but we haven't had a justice in the U.S. Supreme Court that has been impeached for bad behavior. We ought to have, we ought to have a record. We ought to have a record of that that would make judges shake in their boots, you know. And a perfect one for that would be Obama's fraud and forgery in the Supreme Court's lack of a uh, good conscience to even hear, have a hearing on uh, uh, the evidence, the law, and the fact that it's a, the most important position in the country. And, uh, you know, n not having a hearing on, to see if he's qualified because he's black? What is that? What is that? If that's not a preference of color, I don't know what is. If that's not a support of identity politics rather than character of a man or a woman, I don't know what is. You know? Anyway, this woman was decrying the... Um, witness against Brett Kavanaugh and uh, basically you know saying um, you know she she, she just it, 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 it gives women a bad name you know um, to, 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 to do this in such a political forte in, in it, it's like a, a nice dinner being set up and you know, un unleashing Helen Keller onto the dinner table. 
you know, and, um, you know, having to run around blind and screaming, you know, um, uh, or, or, or a mad person, you know, um, I mean, Dr. Ford is, is literally blind. If she cannot remember anything about Brett Kavanaugh and the reason she was in proximity of him in the first place, which was obviously an attraction, you know? What, did, did she lose her legs to walk away at a party? But she's remembered the bad part, but she's not remembered her part in being flirtatious with him, in leading him on, you know, in, you know, he didn't bind her feet. She could have walked away. And then she claims a sexual assault. That is just giving women a terrible, terrible preface to endure. And I'm surprised more women aren't just totally outraged by that woman. I, I think the woman I'm talking about uh, that, that had the testimony, she says, you know, she couldn't wait for men to start bringing sexual harassment charges against women for the same type of thing. You know? And what is this? A battle of the sexes? A division? Oh, yeah. It truly is. And it's just a... It's just a, a... A shame. You know? It's just... Un... It's just... Um... It's... It's, it's just totally stirred up by the devil. You know? And as I thought about that, I thought about Sarah. Man, what a beautiful woman she was. And, you know, I looked up the... You know, all the memories came back to me. And I looked up uh, Sarah and, um, you know, all the artist depictions and stuff like that. And I just got angry. And, of course... Um, anger, secondary emotion, hurt is the first one. I'm hurt. I'm hurt. been hurt a lot the Lord's been hurt a lot and that's why he's frustrated you know I I would think that the the authorities uh, um the shepherds of all the churches uh, I would think that they would be overjoyed that the uh, revelation vision had actually been had um, about Abraham and, and um, I saw Abraham in a vision and I saw his, his father uh, Torah and um, I, I, I know Abraham had more um, concubines and, and, you know, Torah, his father, is mentioned in Genesis chapter 11, verse 26. And uh, Torah or Terah, T-E-R-A-H. He lived seven years and begat Abram, who became Abraham. And you 
you know, I thought about the, 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 the gal that said that about, you know, sexual harassment. I wonder when men will start bringing sexual harassment charges against women. Um, for, for, for leading them on and then, you know, I mean, God help the, the, the next woman Supreme Court justice who's nominated, you know, when she has 10 or 20 men come up and say they were sexually harassed because she led them on, you know, at a party in college. I mean, It's just ridiculous. Anyway, uh, uh, Sarah, she, she, she was, you know, I, I, I said that she, she gave everything to the Lord and she did everything to protect her husband that she possibly could. Um, in in Peter, we we read that she called Abraham Lord, and a respect of the authority of God coming from her husband to her. And when I saw Abraham, he was a he was a magnificent, just a beautiful man. And when you think about God's promises to Abraham, I mean, you've got to understand that, you know, the characteristics, physical comeliness, and everything about Abraham was just like Harlequin romance material. And that's exactly what he reminded me of. Um, he had long, beautiful hair for a man, and, uh, and he was chiseled, and I mean, women would fawn over Abraham. And then I see these pictures, the artist depictions that, that you know, are just woo, way out there in left field. And it makes me mad, you know, because it's not how he looked. It's not who he was, you know. Anyway, I saw in that vision of Abraham and he had... Um, um, Abraham had many wives and, and concubines, and um, the Bible talks about Hagar, and um, Hagar had Ishmael, and the Lord, you know, Abraham pleaded for for, for Ishmael, and the Lord says, "I'm going to bless him too, but my 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 covenant's going to come through your own um, seed, and I'm going to bless." Sarah, your wife, and she's going to have Ishmael. Um, um, she will have a child, and she bear it late. And um, it was interesting also um, that God gave the um, the, the name um, to Hagar when she fled. And what happened between Sarah and Hagar um, was, was not a reflection on Sarah. Um, it was a reflection on Hagar. Um, because when she had a child, um, she didn't respect um, Sarah's role with Abraham as the first. She began to treat Sarah um, in a superior manner rather than um, respecting Sarah's choice to allow her to go to Abraham. And So Sarah went to Abraham and she complained, you know. And um, Abraham acknowledged the order um, and, and Sarah's commitment to that order 
in giving Hagar to Abraham for posterity. The, the increase of the whole family would be a benefit. But Hagar is the one who began treating Sarah badly and, be, and, and wanted to up her um, status in the family. So Hagar was the one that began um, <clears throat> the mischief. And <clears throat> the, the angel of the Lord corrected Hagar when she fled Sarah. Um, in uh, chapter 16 of Genesis and see and Sarah Abraham's wife took Hagar her her maid the Egyptian after Abraham Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan and gave her to her husband Abraham to be his wife and he went in unto Hagar and she conceived and when she saw that she had conceived her mistress was despised in her eyes and Sarah said to Abraham my wrong be upon thee I have given my maid into thy bosom and when she saw that she had conceived I was despised in her eyes <clears throat> and the Lord judged between me and thee and Abraham made the judgment and said you know be it un unto you in, in righteousness according as thou wilt um, but Abraham said to Sarah behold thy maid is in thy hand do to her as it pleaseth thee and when Sarah dealt hardly with her she fled from her face so she took off and then the angel of the Lord appeared to Hagar Sarah's maid and said where are you going and the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress and submit thyself under her hand. So the angel of the Lord corrected Hagar. Said, Listen, you got to submit yourself to Sarah. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. So it will be a blessing for you if you'll be submissive to Sarah. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shalt bear a son, and shalt call his name Ishmael, uh, because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. And he will be a wild man, his hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him, and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. And she called the name of the Lord, the name of the Lord that spake unto her, Thou God seest me, for she said, Have I also here looked after him that seeth me, wherefore the well was called Ber La Ha Roy. Behold, it is between Kadesh and Bered. And Hagar bare Abraham a son, and Abraham called his name, which Hagar bare Ishmael. And, and Abraham was fourscore and six years old when Hagar bare Ishmael to Abraham. <coughs> Uh, so we, we, we learn a little bit of the characteristics of Sarah there and how righteous she was in respecting the order of the family. Then we also see Hagar, when she tried to supersede it, was corrected. And then when she submitted, she was also blessed and her seed was blessed, molten big time you know there's two places also that we see that Abraham his life was threatened and um, he told Sarah hey listen you're a beautiful woman and that's why we know Sarah was absolutely gorgeous when you saw the woman Men wanted her. And 
And you think a beautiful woman like that is not going to have a, a, a pretty handsome husband. Abraham was very, very handsome, you know. And, um, you know, men, men were jealous of him because he had a beautiful wife. And so in two places, chapter 12 of Genesis and um, chapter 18, uh, oh, wait a minute. Um, let me see here. I'm losing the place. In in chapter twenty. So there's two places here. First, um, a Abraham. There's great big drought and famine, and uh, so Abraham he's got to go down to uh, Egypt and. Um, And it came to pass in uh, chapter 12, verse 12, Therefore it shall come to pass, when the Egyptians shall see thee, thou sh they shall say, This is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will save thee alive. Say, I pray thee, thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake, and my soul shall live because of thee. So Sarah um, obeyed her husband. In recognizing the truth of that we're all brothers and sisters of the Lord God has created all of us we're all brothers and sisters so there's the truth of what Abraham was telling Sarah hey you got to say you're my sister <clears throat> and so she said you know okay well it came to pass that when Abraham was coming to Egypt the Egyptians beheld the woman and that she was very fair and the princess also of Pharaoh saw her and commanded her before Pharaoh. They went to Pharaoh and said, man, this is a good looking woman. You got to see her. And the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house and he entreated Abram well for her sake. Because she was saying that Abram, Abraham was her brother. And he had sheep and oxen and asses and men servants and maid servants and asses and camels. So Pharaoh was making Abram, Abraham a, a very wealthy man, treating him as a uh, brother-in-law, basically. And the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarah, Abram's wife. And Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this that thou hast done unto me? Why dost thou not tell me that she was thy wife? Uh, why says thou she is my sister so I might have taken her to me to wife now therefore behold thy wife take her and go away and then in another place chapter 20 we have a name Ambalik desires Sarah and um, uh, Abraham journeyed from thence towards south country and dwelt between Kadesh and Shur and Sojourn to Gur. And Abraham said of Sarah, his wife, she is my sister. And Amalek, king of Gerur, sent and took Sarah. But God came to Amalek in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man for the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. But Amalek had not come near her. So in that instance, the, the Lord saved uh, Amalek. Um, before he had touched Sarah as a um, uh, mistress or a concubine and um, she is my sister and she even uh, she herself said he is my brother in the integrity of my heart in the sea of my hands have I done this he said, he's, he's pleading with the Lord hey don't put a curse on me you know, they told me this. It's the innocence of my heart. And the Lord says, yeah, I understand that. You know, uh, you, you know, you're, you're innocent, which is why I came to you in this dream. Um, 
and withheld you from sinning against me. Therefore suffered I thee not to touch her. Now therefore restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live, and if thou restore her not, know that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. Therefore Amalek arose early in the morning, and called all of his servants, and told all these things in their ears, and the men were sore afraid. And they let, uh, they let, him, they let him go. So it was a way of preserving Abraham. And... So we see in those instances where uh, Abraham was blessed in both circumstances. In the, the, the pleasure and the delight of the Lord and in fulfilling the Lord's promise. So the characteristics of Sarah, I, I have to ask myself, you know, where are the women today that have the characteristics of Sarah? You know, she was such a wise woman, and um, that's rare, very, very rare. I mean, there's so many women nowadays that get pissed off at their husband, and they just file the divorce, you know, and they're willing to file a divorce over a sexual encounter. Well, both Sarah and Abraham knew their relationship was more and their, their uh, inheritance. Check out the ducks. Yay! Little duckies. Their, um, their, 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 their family inheritance, their, 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 um, their wealth and everything was more than just predicated on sex. And there is a huge, huge disparity in the wisdom of Sarah now in the women of today. I mean, you can't, I mean, I, I, haven't, found, I haven't found a woman with the wisdom of Sarah. Yeah. That's why I defend her and I, you know, another story that gives us a little bit of a, the characteristics of Sarah too, is when uh, Abraham entertained the three men, the three angels, they came to him and, and said, hey, Sarah's going to have a, a baby uh, out, of, out of your own loins. Um, and I think she was 99 and Abraham was 106 or something like that. But anyway, Sarah laughed within herself. Um, yeah, because she she quit having her periods a long time ago, and the the, the, the three angels they said, "Is anything too hard for the Lord? Are you doubting the Lord?" And Sarah denied, denied. I didn't laugh. I didn't laugh. So she, I mean, she respected. The Lord, but the fact that she lacked within herself about her own physical capabilities lets you know that I mean she was grounded in reality. And when the Lord came and said, "You're going to have a son," uh, you know she 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 kind of snuckered a little bit and. <clears throat> So that's a, a character, um, a little bit of uh, doubt, you know, came into her mind and she was like, wow, I can't have, can't have kids, I'm too old. We read that in 
Genesis chapter 18 verse 14 and the Lord said to Abraham wherefore did Sarah laugh saying shall I of a surety bear child which am old is anything too hard for the Lord at the time appointed I will return unto thee according to the time of life so the Lord restored her ability to generate seed restored her womb and Sarah shall have a son then Sarah denied saying I laugh not for she was afraid and he said nay but thou didst laugh you cannot hide from the Lord you just can't you just can't do it and that is why I'm chastening and I'm trying to chasten in a hope and encouragement for women to start studying these beautiful women who are beautiful on the outside. I mean, Sarah was the model of Maybelline. You know, hey, I mean, she was hot, good looking, gorgeous woman. When she walked into a room, everybody turned their head and stared. And the men rose up from thence and looked toward Sodom, and Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. So Sarah bore Isaac. And in chapter 21, we see that. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham, a son, in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. God fulfilled his promise. Sarah bare Isaac. And Abraham was a hundred, hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. And Sarah said, God hath made me to laugh, so that all that here will laugh with me. <laughs> she had a great sense of humor too, didn't she? Beautiful woman, great sense of humor. Beautiful on the inside and out. Anyway, 